So, just to prove you're not the only person who can precariously balance a video recording device in a vehicle, it's cold AF. It's got to be about 8, 9 in the morning. I don't know if I just got up, but so I thought I'd record a video in my car. That's right, Colin. I'm coming for you. Welcome back to the Red Dice Stories. <music> So if you didn't get that reference before the intro, don't worry about it. It was a, a tongue-in-cheek sort of jokey reference to um, a friend and fellow podcaster and now YouTube person, Colin Green, a.k.a. Spike Pit, who has been recording a podcast based on OSR Gaming for quite some time. And recently he's taken up to doing some YouTube videos recorded in his van, normally wearing like a big sort of Russian hat, no doubt preserving him against the cold in those sort of old like transit style of vans. And I've got to admit, Colin, I do apologise if you're watching this. I meant to wear my flat cap this morning, but I forgot about it and I'm regretting it now because I've just had the old um, dome shaved a bit and it's a little bit chilly. But anyway, let's get on to the main subject of this video i wanted to talk a little bit about the sectors without number website that i've been using recently for my white star game and you might say oh john surely i've heard of sectors without number it's a uh, it's a sort of a sector sort of star map creation tool that's designed for stars without number what's that going to do with your white star game well initially i've got to admit i didn't really see the sort of interplay between the two of them however Given that most of the stuff in um, Sectors Without Number is fairly sort of system agnostic, you can use it with anything. And White Star and Stars Without Number share similar sort of old school roots, although Stars Without Number has sort of moved away from that a good deal. So I found the two worked really well together. So first of all, I initially started using it just simply for a map. I wanted something to quickly create a hex map and sort of randomly generate the star map rather than me having to do it manually, but one that I could actually tweak afterwards. And Sectors Without Number allow me to do that. And hopefully by the miracle of post-edit wizardry, I will put in some screenshots as I'm talking about this to show you what I mean. So first of all, you get your basic screen where you can design or generate your hex map. But once you've done that, you can unlock the editing on that and you can so click and hold down on an empty hex to generate a new star system or a black hole or something like that. But also you can edit any of the existing star systems. And that includes putting extra descriptions in, putting extra notes in, adding like moons and space stations and stuff like that. And then tweaking the various tags that the website uses on them. Now, tags are a concept I've seen in a lot of games, and in Stars Without Number, they're basically short little descriptions that tell you something about the, the entity in question. So if you, you might have a tag like out of control AI for a space station or something like that, and it's just a little short phrase that tells you an awful lot about that place, but and basically serves as a springboard for the GM's imagination to get you going. Now, so that's pretty much all I used it for at first, the map and creating the details of the systems and stuff like that. And then I had made various additions to it manually using my virtual tabletop of choice, which at the moment is Foundry VTT. Now, recently I discovered that you can actually sort of mark out areas of space that are controlled by factions in your game. And what I mean when I say factions, well, it's what it sounds like. It's a, a group or a collection of species, people, whatever you want to call them, in your game. And Stars Without Number has a, a whole system for dealing with this, which is very specific in some areas, infuriatingly vague in others, like how many points you get to actually make a faction and obviously you can gm fiat that away but it would have been nice to see a little bit of guidance on that but it's still a pretty robust system i know that when johannes ran a stars that number game for us it was used to great effect and after looking at it i was like well in terms of mechanics the the faction system doesn't actually really relate to 
the rest of the actual Stars Light Number game. So why can't I just take that and copy and paste it into my White Star game and use it as is? Now, I don't have to do that. Obviously, you can get away perfectly without having this faction interplay in the background. But as with uh, my Old School Essentials game, I like to create that feeling that the sort of game world, the campaign world, is moving on whether the players do something or not and that there's events going on in the background and things occurring just because i think it makes your game feel deeper and more rich so i thought yeah i'll use the faction system and i spent a while with my stars light number book and the sectors light number website sat down yesterday and i came up with like the three main factions in the Damascus sector, which is the setting of our game, which are the Dominion, who are sort of like the Empire, but with the serial numbers very lightly buffed off. There are the Kafis, who are these hut-like uh, crime families who have a, like a big area of space, like a commercial slash sort of mafia venture. And then we have the Ravagers, who are a bit like your Reavers out of Firefly, and they're sort of like a band of space between the two. And initially, I just sort of coloured in their areas of space to demarcate it and imported that map into Foundry. So I had it all nicely laid out. We can have a little icon showing where the players are and they're moving around and stuff like that. But after actually creating them as factions, the Stars That Numbers faction system gives you what's called a faction turn, which without going into too much detail, because I'm not doing an exhaustive video on stars without numbers faction system although if you want to see some more about that let me know i can do that that's not a problem uh, each faction has assets which are like space fleets intelligence assets uh, wealth assets stuff like that and you can sort of move them between worlds and set up bases of operation and stuff like that and when you set up these assets in sectors without number it actually on the main map if you click on a system it will tell you if there are any assets in that system and I found that very useful because what I've started doing in my game, um, the Damascus Sector game, I've started, I'm, I'm probably going to do uh, a faction turn maybe every two or three sessions, something like that, and just to keep things moving in the background. So what I've done is I'm, I've done the first faction turn now, which is basically both the CAFIS syndicates and the Dominion sort of consolidating and setting up new bases of, of influence. The Cafe sector setting up lots of different bases, but they're only fairly weak at the minute. They're going to have to be built up. Whereas the Dominion set up a single base, but it's a lot stronger individually. Whereas the Ravagers just sent their fleets to different sectors, which fleets and various assets have different abilities regarding moving. Once they got there, two of the systems they're in were unoccupied, so. I was like, right, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the um, Occupy a Planet action. So those two fleets, they've occupied like two different systems. If they manage to stay there uncontested for another three campaign turns or faction turns, they gain a tag, which basically means, it's called the Planetary Governor tag, which basically means you rule that sort of area. Whereas the one that's in a system that's occupied by both the CAFIS and the Dominion, obviously that's not uncontested, so that's not happened there. But I then used that sort of rough framework to put together a, a sort of galactic news, like newsletter thing, which I thought I can drop on the event page in Facebook every now and again. The players can read it or not as they choose, but it'll give the effect that there's stuff going on in the background. And I found a lovely sort of word template, I'm sorry, I forget who it was by, which sort of mimics the, the Star Trek LCOS system, you know, that system of the kudograms that they use to lay out everything. And hey, this this game we're on, it, it's pretty light, it's pretty simple. We're, we're sort of taking inspiration from all of our favourite sci-fi properties. We've got stuff from Babylon 5, Space Above and Beyond, Star Wars, Star Trek, and we're all throwing it in the mix. So... I've yoinked that um, word template and I'm going to use that to do a little galactic newsletter and sort of post that up on the Facebook events to keep players up to date with what's going on, which is made a lot easier by the fact that I have found a calendar module that I can install on Foundry VTT, which amongst other things will let me track major events when like NPCs need paying, you know, like hirelings and stuff like that. 
which is handy because the players, with all the various salvaging they've done and purchasing, they've now effectively got four ships and they're going to need people to crew them and them people need paying. Otherwise, who knows what they're going to do with your ship. So it's there's a lot of um, utility in this um, calendar module, even though it's very simple, that allows me to keep track of all these things. So I think the real benefit of the Sectors Without Number website transcends the Stars Without Number system, although it's very good for that, and is of great use for pretty much any sci-fi space slash hex crawl you want to run. And it's all very customizable. So, you know, if you don't like the tags that are in Stars Without Number, you can change it. You can ignore the tags. You can just add notes and just use it as a background sort of system. You can ignore the faction turns. You can ignore the faction creation if you want to just use it as a map. Um, it's pretty versatile and it's pretty easy to pick up. And there is a very handy sort of website which explains stuff if you, in the unlikely event you're having any difficulty with it. So I know this isn't an exhaustive treatment of sectors without number. If people are interested in seeing that, let me know. Maybe I can put something together. But to cut a long story short, if you're looking for a tool for your sort of hex slash space crawling needs, then you could do far worse than give sectors without number a look. I've certainly found it really, really useful for my game. And I'm all in favour of anything that makes the GM's prep easier. We've all got stuff going on. So anything that can just lift that burden a little bit, make it a bit more interesting and make it a bit easier has got to be a good thing, right? Anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening. If you've got anything you want to say about this, drop it down in the comments. We also have a podcast that sort of a couple of episodes go out weekly, which I'll put a link to in the description below. Please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And until I see you again, take care, stay safe, and whatever you're playing, have fun. Bye.